So welcome back guys. So today we'll do the remaining problems. So problem 13 is asking we, ha we have an electron in the n equal to 3 orbit of a hydrogen like atom with atomic number of z. So at absolute temperature of t a neutron having thermal energy kbt. So that's basically the translational kinetic energy as well. And uh, it has the same de Broglie wavelength as that of this electron. So the de Broglie wavelength of the neutron will be h by p and p we can write as square root 2m ke. So this is going to be square root uh, 2m of the neutron times kbt and this would be equal to the wavelength of the electron and the electron is in the n equal to 3 orbit. Uh, so using the angular momentum quantization rule we know mvr is equal to nh over 2 pi. So from here h over mv is 2 pi r by n and h over mv is the de Broglie wavelength. 2 pi r by 3 uh, is the de Broglie wavelength of the electron. Now the radii of the third orbit we can express in terms of the radii of the first orbit r3 we can write it as a naught n square so this would be 3 squared divided by z okay so yeah, that's basically it we can we have to solve for t now okay so after you solve you'll get the answer for alpha as 72 so yeah moving on so in problem 14 we have a pair of ideal electric dipoles so each dipole has a dipole moment of magnitude p and they're oriented as the arrows in the figures uh, in all the configurations the dipoles are fixed such that their distance are two are apart in the x direction. The midpoint of the line joining the two dipoles is at x. The possible resultant electric field E at x. Okay, so I define the resultant electric field at the midpoint. Okay, so the electric field at the, equi at the equatorial point would be negative kp by r cubed. So both of their fields will just superimpose, right? So and the magnitude will be 2 kp by r cube in the negative j direction. So p will just match with the second option and q will of course match with zero because now the electric fields are cancelling. And for our option, the because of the electric field on the left, we'll have a negative kp by r cubed. And because of this dipole, we'll have a 2 kp by r cubed because now it's at a at the axial position. So a plus 2 kp by r cube in the x direction and a negative kp by r cube in the y direction. So r will match with 4. So p2 q1 r4 will be option c. Now moving on. So in problem 15 we have a circuit in which an electric load having an impedance z is connected with an ac source and the source voltage is given as 300 sine of 400 t. So list 1 shows various options for the load and list 2 is the possible currents okay and their graphs are provided so we have to match once again so yeah first for the first diagram the current is just going to be v divided by 30 so that'll be so the peak current is going to be 10 amperes and it's going to be a sine 400 t function so of course it's going to be option 3 okay so p will match with 3 so it's either a or c so option for option q we have an inductor as well of 100 milli henry if we try to calculate xl it will be 100 milli henry multiplied by 400 l omega so this is going to be 40 ohms so now we'll just draw the voltage triangle so even though none of this is necessary but still so if i assume the current to be in the along the x direction so i r would be along the x direction and i x l will be exactly perpendicular to this and this would be the resultant voltage phasor so this is going to be 300 and if this angle is let's say theta well tan theta is x l by r which is actually 4 by 3 so this will be 53 degrees so if the question was asking uh, what is the angle by which something leads or lags we can figure it out this way but uh, here we only need to care about the peak value so so the z value is 50 so you can just so in the impedance triangle the 30 ohm and the 40 ohm are going to be perpendicular so the equivalent impedance will be 50 so if you divide 300 with 50 you get 6 so you just have to look for the curve in which the peak value is 6. Here it is 5. Here also it's 5. Um, if you look at option 5, so if you look at option 5, the peak value is about 6. So that's the only answer. Uh, and here also, as from the diagram, you can see that as it's an inductive circuit, uh, it's the voltage that is leading the current. So if the current is lagging, it means we'll just shift the sine curve to the right by some amount. Okay, so now it is over here. So option Q will match with 5, only option A does. So the other two options are also trivial. So, so yeah, that's basically it. So question 16, we have to match the functional dependencies of energy E on the atomic number Z. Okay, so they have given us energy associated with certain phenomena in list 2. So yeah, E is proportional to Z square. So, so this is the energy of the 
nth subshell for hydrogen like atoms right so so energy of radiation due to electronic transitions in hydrogen like atoms so p matches with 5 and q e is proportional to z minus 1 whole squared so uh, this is when we use the z effective as z minus 1 in the case of x rays when we have characteristic x rays right so when when the accelerated electron you know hits the target metal and knocks out an electron in the k subshell we we say that the effective uh, z value felt by an electron in the l subshell is going to be z minus 1 because there is only one electron present now as the other one is knocked out but the z minus 1 is only true for uh, k subshell transition okay that's what the mosley's law tells us so even though it's given as characteristic x-rays they're talking about k alpha and k beta so yeah anyways q will match with one now r proportional to z z minus one and uh, so if you read the second option the electrostatic part of the nuclear biting energy for stable nuclei uh, with mass numbers in the range 30 to 170 so the electrostatic part where the factor z z minus one so if you consider z protons to lie inside the nucleus and then the electrostatic potential energy term between any two protons is it's going to be k e squared over r where r is a separation between them if you figure out how many terms are going to be there it's going to be proportional to the number of proton proton pairs okay so that could be figured out using zc2 and from here we get the factor of zz minus uh, one and approximately we say that the total energy is some constant let's say c uh, times k e squared by an average distance you know we once again say it is going to be some constant times the radii of the atom okay so basically it's some constant times zz minus one divided by the radii of the nuclei okay so that's the approximate relation for the electrostatic uh, energy between the protons so yeah that's where the zz minus one relation comes you know in the nuclear binding energy so r will match with two and for s now this is a uh, given in ncrt so if you go check out the graph between aver average binding energy per nucleon versus the mass number uh, it's written down there specifically that in that particular curve for mass numbers between 30 to 170 the binding energy per nucleon is practically constant is practically constant and yeah so it's going to be independent of z as well so s will match with four in this case okay p5 q1 uh, r2 and s4 is going to be c option okay so that's it for paper one we'll discuss paper two as well the upcoming videos so yeah that's it if you enjoyed make sure to like share and subscribe thanks for watching